Okay. Uh, welcome to functional food uh, development practice. And today uh, we will uh, doing some experiments. Uh, the first one we will make a functional uh, yogurt, and the second one we will make a functional tempeh. Uh, so we start uh, from uh, functional tempeh. As we know that tempeh is a, a fermented soy food that was made from fermentations of soybean with uh, rhizobus mold or tempeh mold that uh, has uh, a health benefit properties uh, for uh, preventing uh, disease uh, such as uh, diabetes mellitus. Uh, hypertension uh, as well as cancer. So uh, uh, in a recent study uh, according to Huang et al, a study that was conducted in 2018, uh, they have uh, developed uh, some methods that was applied uh, lactic acid bacteria during tempeh processing and it increased uh, the functional uh, uh, bioactive compound in tempeh, uh, which is uh, the isoflavin content. And today uh, we will use uh, or we will apply that method by using uh, modified uh, lactic acid bacteria from uh, fermented uh, cassava, or we call it caplet. So, first uh, we will have uh, soybean, uh, this is local soybean that uh, I have bought from uh, local markets and then the second one <coughs> uh, we have uh, this uh, risopus mold or uh, tempeh mold that I also bought from uh, local markets so uh, we also have uh, fermented uh, cassava which was submerged for uh, one night in uh, water and this fermented cassava is usually used for development other uh, fermented food uh, which is uh, tewol or katot and uh, these foods uh, are traditional uh, fermented fruit from uh, Yogyakarta which is from uh, Gunung Kidul in Yogyakarta regions and uh, today uh, I will uh, present how to make a functional uh, tempeh which is modified uh, uh, which is a modified method in tempeh uh, development uh, which include the lactic acid bacteria from fermented uh, or fermented cassava and uh, based on our study we found that this method uh, can increase the uh, glycon uh, isoflavin content in tempeh, uh, which is significant uh, co uh, different uh, compared with the uh, uh, normal tempeh. And then this method also have significant impact on nutrient uh, value of the tempeh, uh, which one of them is uh, the dietary fiber content in modified tempeh is significantly higher than uh, regular tempeh one. So let's start our uh, pra practicum or our uh, session today. And <coughs> I have bought around uh, half uh, kilos of uh, soybean from local market. So first thing first, uh, we will try to clean the soybean with the water so first uh, we add the water all right then we cleaned uh, the soybean Yeah, uh, this step is important uh, because uh, uh, the local soybean contain uh, some uh, seeds or 
other compound uh, which can uh, impact a uh, stem result. So this is an example of unwanted uh, compound. Yeah. So we will clean this one. So if this is hard to clean, then we can just pour it. And sometimes uh, the soybean also contain another seed. For example, this is a corn seed. <laughs> this is not uh, uh, the soybean uh, seed. So we need to remove this one. Usually, uh, for washing the soybean, uh, I use it twice. So we will have a, a second uh, washing just to make it sure that uh, there is no other unwanted uh, seed or uh, unwanted compound. After uh, we have cleaned uh, the soybean, then uh, we will soak it in water for approximately uh, one hour. Uh, and then after that, uh, we will boil uh, the soybean uh, for around 30 minutes uh, before we apply uh, this lactic acid bacteria. Uh, from soaking uh, fermented cassava uh, for uh, overnight. The next, after we soak uh, the soybean in water for around uh, one and a half hour, and then uh, we cleaned the water. We will clean. And afterwards, we will uh, wash uh, the soybean three times. And after we wash uh, the soybean for three times, and then we boil it, it uh, we boil it uh, for 30 minutes. And after that, we uh, dehull uh, the skin of the soybean uh, by using hand or uh, machines or, equi or other equipment. But traditionally, this step in uh, traditional uh, I'm sorry uh, in traditional uh, producer uh, producer uh, they will use uh, barefoot to remove uh, the skin of the soybean so uh, we will try uh, to put the cleaned uh, soybean into the boiled water and then we boil it for 30 minutes uh, 
uh, prior to uh, the healing uh, process. All right. So we will wait while the soybean was being uh, boiling. Uh, uh, we need to mix the soybean and uh, uh, to make the temperature was evenly distributed uh, between the soybean so this uh, we mix uh, the soybean uh, while being uh, boiling and uh, during this process uh, it is important to note that uh, this boiling process is uh, important uh, first to kill the pathogenic bacteria that are present in the water uh, or uh, pathogenic bacteria from contaminations and then the second one this step uh, is also important uh, in uh, the healing process because uh, uh, boiling, boiling the soybean will make uh, the peeling process uh, easier compared when uh, we don't uh, boil the soybean. So there are uh, two important things uh, from this first boiling process uh, for the soybean and then we will boil it for uh, another 30 minutes and afterwards uh, we will peel uh, the skin of the soybean and after we peel, uh, peel the the soybean and then we will uh, soak again uh, we will divide it into two and uh, the first one we will soak it in water and the second one we will soak it in uh, 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 water from the fermented cassava and this uh, incubations for uh, 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 soaking and uh, dehulling uh, or peeled uh, soybean uh, will take uh, around uh, 12 hours uh, and then after second uh, soaking uh, the soybean uh, will be washed and then uh, we will boil it again for just uh, 15 minutes and afterwards uh, we will dry the soybean and after we air dry uh, air dry the soybean and then we will add uh, uh, the mold uh, tempeh mold or risopus mold uh, into uh, the soybean yeah. so this is what I called that this process or boiling process actually uh, will make a significant impact on uh, peeling yeah. because uh, by uh, boiling uh, eventually uh, some of uh, the soybean the soybean skin uh, can be peeled uh, without uh, we are using uh, force or we are uh, using our hand or tools so this is uh, important steps to reduce the time and effort uh, to peel the, the soybean yeah, so this is the soybean skin which uh, which is uh, peeled by uh, boiling the soybean so we will remove it and afterwards uh, we will uh, peel, yeah. peel the remaining uh, so of soybean. So I will remove it in here yeah. while while being mixed. I also remove uh, the skin, the soybean skin.
So uh, after we boiled for around 30 minutes, uh, and then uh, we toss out the water, or we remove the water. And afterwards, uh, we will wait until the soybean was cold enough to remove or to, to be peeled, uh, to remove the skin or to be peeled. And uh, there are several methods to remove uh, the skin of uh, the soybean. The first method is the traditional one which uh, was uh, using uh, barefoot yeah, uh, to remove the, the soybean and the second one uh, we can use uh, water assisted uh, methods uh, which is in this method we will add uh, water uh, into the soybean and then we peeled uh, the, the skin of the soybean and then the last one, uh, we can use a, a machine uh, to peel uh, the skin. Uh, but for today uh, experiment or today uh, uh, practice, uh, we will use a water assisted uh, method. And I will try to add uh, the water first into uh, and then the soybean. Okay, and I will wait uh, for the temperature to reach a uh, normal temperature. And afterwards, uh, I will show you how to do uh, the second methods by using a water assisted uh, method. Try to check the water. Oh, it is still hot. So uh, I will wait until uh, the temperature of the water was reduced, and then afterwards uh, I will peel uh, the soybean. All right. So uh, this is uh, the soybean that has been peeled off, and afterwards uh, we divide it into two. Uh, the first one, we will soak it in water for uh, 18 hours and then the second one, we will soak it uh, in uh, fermented cassava water. So this is the fermented cassava uh, that we use for uh, today's um, practice. Uh, as you can see, uh, there is some mold that growth in here and uh, it also contains the lactic acid bacteria uh, present in this uh, fermented cassava. 
and this is the soak water of the fermented cassava as uh, if you can smell it uh, it is uh, acidic and it feels like uh, uh, yeah it's it it's an acidic so it also contains the lactic acid bacteria in here and afterwards <coughs> I will <coughs> transfer the soak sorry uh, the peeled uh, soybean into a container into this container and afterwards I will add the water from soak fermented cassava overnight this uh, method uh, actually can increase the the presence of uh, the lactic acid bacteria in uh, our products as well as the bioactive compound present in this modified tempeh such as the dietary fiber component as well as uh, the glycon isoflavones contained in this one the uh, date zine level was significantly higher compared with the uh, regular tempeh one So after uh, we submerge uh, the soybean with uh, the water from fermented cassava, we will close uh, the container lid because we will perform uh, the fermentations uh, for 18 hours. And on the next one, I will clean this one first. And for this one, uh, I will use water to soak it, uh, soak the soybean by water. Uh, because uh, this method is important also during uh, tempe uh, development because uh, it can uh, reduce the acidity of uh, the soybean and the reduced acidity is important especially for uh, tempe mold uh, growth and uh, the soybean as well as in preventing uh, the development of uh, the unwanted uh, bacteria that present in uh, water or pathogenic bacteria and we will use uh, water to soak the soybean, the peeled soybean and study has reported that this method uh, actually can uh, leaching out the or organic acids from uh, the soybean uh, and this uh, significantly impact the acidity of uh, the soybean uh, so uh, both methods actually uh, important in reducing the pH of the soybean uh, which is important uh, during uh, tempeh mold uh, growth 
uh, the development of the mycelia from the timber mold. But uh, we can also use uh, other methods such as by using organic acids uh, such as uh, lactic uh, acid or uh, acetic acid. We can use them both uh, to reduce the acidity of the soy. Uh, the effect or the main uh, reason for both uh, actually similar to this process that uh, reducing the pH is important for the mold growth and uh, we will incubate it at room temperature uh, for 18 hours and see you after 18 hours so uh, we want to make sure that the pH uh, to compare between uh, the acidity for the soaked water before and after 18 hours so we need to check it first uh, just to make sure that the pH will be reduced uh, during the incubation uh, period so uh, I will use the uh, universal indicator uh, to check uh, the pH of the soak uh, the water and uh, the soak water of uh, fermented cassava as well as uh, the uh, pH of the uh, water so first I will check uh, the pH of uh, the soak fermented cassava okay and then uh, we will compare it with this uh, pH so as we can see that uh, the approximate uh, pH of uh, the soak water of fermented cassava is around 4 so the pH of these solutions is around 4 and then uh, we will check for this one by using the water just to make sure that after 18 hours of incubations uh, and the pH will be reduced in this uh, soybean so first the pH uh, of the solutions is around 6 or 7 yeah. so uh, based on this one uh, we can uh, get a conclusion that the acidity of the soak uh, the uh, the soak water of fermented cassava is acid compared with the water and uh, we will check the acidity after 18 hours uh, just to make sure that uh, the acidity was kept low uh, to promote the growth of uh, the tempe mold afterwards okay so uh, that's all for today and we will continue uh, after 18 hours of incubations so after uh, an overnight uh, soaking process uh, we check uh, the acidity of um, uh, the acidity of the soaking water by using a similar unifer universal uh, pH indicator and based on uh, this result Oops. we can clearly see that uh, this is from uh, the water and this is from the uh, fermented uh, cassava water as we can clearly see that the pH of the water is reduced uh, but the pH from uh, the fermented cassava uh, have a significant increase compared with the uh, prior to uh, additions of uh, the soybean so uh, the <coughs> the high uh, pH of the uh, fermented uh, cassava uh, soaking water uh, is increased because uh, there is uh, other uh, chemicals or other uh, bioactive compounds 
that are leached out uh, from uh, the uh, soybean and it has uh, an impact on the acidity of uh, the water itself while uh, the water uh, because uh, there is nothing in, in, in the water so there will be no uh, chemical reactions because uh, there are no lactic acid bacteria or other uh, bacteria present in the soaking water so the reduced uh, pH uh, can be explained by uh, the presence of the organic acids that are leached out from uh, the uh, from the soybean and uh, it uh, it has an impact on reducing the pH also and uh, there is also study that uh, the lactic acid bacteria that are present in the soybean uh, also has a significant impact on the pH also in reducing the, the pH so based on uh, these two methods um, we can clearly see the difference uh, while in the water the pH is uh, reduced and in the fermented cassava uh, soaked water the pH is uh, increasing so there are two different uh, process or two different uh, reactions uh, and we will proceed after this one we will clean the soybean and then we will boil it uh, for around 10 up to 15 minutes and then we will air dry it and afterwards uh, we will uh, add uh, the tempeh mold into each of uh, the soybean so so I will remove the water this is the control or the standard tempe that was uh, soaked with uh, the water If you can smell it, uh, uh, the smell is uh, acidic in here, even though it's just a water. Usually, uh, I will wash it twice before proceed into the boiling process. after two uh, washing process then uh, we will boil it in the stove so we will wait around uh, 10 minutes approximately around 10 minutes to boil uh, the soybean and then after 10 minutes uh, we will air dry the soybean and we will add uh, the mold while uh, we are waiting for uh, the soybean we can wash uh, the soaked soybean with the fermented cassava uh, so the process is uh, quite similar so i will remove uh, the water from this one this one is uh, very acidic yeah. compared with the water one yeah, it's, it's, it's quite acidic because uh, as we know that uh, the water from the fermented cassava uh, has a uh, lower pH compared with the water itself so I will remove 
guys. And interestingly, uh, the lactic acid bacteria from uh, fermented cassava is heat tolerant. So uh, when uh, we boil uh, the, the soybean uh, for 10 minutes, uh, we can still produce uh, high level lactic acid bacteria in, in the tempeh product. So. The difference in the lactic acid bacteria uh, difference uh, between uh, both of uh, the tempeh product is uh, significant according to a statistical analysis. Yeah, so this is the first uh, washing snaps. Then uh, we will boil it after we uh, wait for the soybean and the control soybean to be boiled uh, for uh, five up to ten minutes. Okay. Yeah, the second uh, boiling process is uh, actually uh, shorter compared with the first boiling process because uh, we don't want to kill the lactic acid bacteria that are present in the soybean. The next one, we will filter it, filter the soybean. you can see the soybean right now after the second boiling process it's more uh, clearer uh, compared with the first boiling process one then after we uh, filtered uh, the water uh, we will air dry it uh, we will dry the soybean at room temperature Usually it takes around two or three hours uh, before uh, the soybean was completely dry. And if you can smell, the smells like a tofu. <laughs> After a uh, boiling process, uh, the smells of uh, the soybean will be like a tofu and this is due to the acidity also plays an important role in the flavoring uh, process in here so all right and uh, we will air dry it later but uh, first the next one I will try to boil the uh, soybean from the soaking with uh, the fermented cassava water so after around uh, five minutes boiling I will just uh, do the same or similar things uh, I will filter the water out of the soybean and then afterwards uh, we will air dry the soybean and we will add uh, the tempeh mold afterwards.
uh, the smell is quite uh, different compared with the uh, water one the water one feels like a tofu while for this one the soybean uh, has still has an acidic uh, flavor but uh, the flavor is not as strong as uh, the water it has quite a unique uh, flavor compared with the uh, the methods by uh, soaking in water one uh, this can be explained by the uh, fermentation uh, process of the lactic acid bacteria and other uh, bacteria that are present in uh, soak uh, fermented cassava water because the uniqueness of this technique uh, not only does the uh, glycan isoflavin that are increased but also uh, the taste of the final product of uh, the tempeh will be al also affected by this uh, process however uh, we didn't do the metabolomic studies uh, for uh, tempeh that are uh, developed uh, by this uh, process and it will be uh, really interesting if uh, uh, we can uh, clearly see the uh, metabolic uh, metabolomic uh, compositions of uh, the tempeh that are uh, developed by uh, this method. But uh, we do have uh, conducted the metagenomic studies, and we found interesting uh, studies, uh, interesting results. I'm sorry, uh, that uh, actually. Uh, the major uh, bacteria uh, that are present in uh, the final product of tempeh by using the first method or by using a soak in water or by using the second method by uh, soak in fermented cassava water uh, it has quite uh, different uh, bacteria compositions but uh, they have a similar uh, trend that uh, the major and uh, the major uh, phyla or major bacteria that are present in the resulted tempe is uh, derived from uh, firmicutes and proteobacteria and uh, we will add dry it uh, for around two hours and then afterwards uh, we will add uh, the tempe mold uh, we will add around uh, one grams of tempeh mold uh, for uh, one kilograms of uh, the soybean. So uh, see you after two hours uh, after we iodide uh, the soybean. Okay. So the next after we iodide uh, the soybean, we will wait it, and then uh, we will add uh, the tempeh mold, and we will use this one. Uh, with a ratio one grams of this uh, tempeh mold for uh, kilograms of tempeh so uh, I will wait wait for uh, <coughs> the soybean So we have around uh, 274 <coughs> for the control one, 274 and for this modify uh, tembe one. Yeah, we got uh, quite a similar <coughs> around 279. Uh, for uh, the modified uh, tempeh one so <coughs> based on this one uh, we can calculate uh, for how much of uh, the uh, tempeh mold so one grams per kilograms 
uh, in this case uh, is similar to 0.3 grams of uh, this uh, time wave mold per uh, around 300 uh, grams of tempe uh, sorry of uh, soybean <coughs> so on the next one uh, i will try to weight around uh, 0 0.3 grams so we have successfully weighed uh, around uh, 0 0.3 uh, grams or 300 milligrams and then we will add it into both of uh, the air dried soybean Okay, then we will mix it. <laughs> you can mix it with a uh, spoon or other equipments, but uh, traditionally uh, they mix between the mold and the soybean by using hand okay after we mix it then we transfer it into a plastic bag that uh, had been uh, pinched with a hole in here okay so we have around 100 and and that's it for uh, tempeh preparations and we will wait uh, in incubator so we will incubate it at incubator uh, for two days or 48 hours uh, at 37 degrees see you after 48 hours so uh, after we air dry and add the tempeh mold then we will incubate it at incubator at seven, uh, 37 degrees for 48 hours so I will transfer Alright, so this is the resulted product of our tempe and this is the normal one that was uh, incubated uh, around three days and this tempe was used uh, water for uh, soak uh, for overnight and this one uh, this is the tempe that was soaked with uh, fermented cassava for overnight so uh, we will have a commentary regarding of these two products with Miss Danny in here, so Miss Danny will give uh, a comment uh, regarding of our two products. Jadi baik, uh, selamat pagi, pagi. Pak Danny. Yeah. Ya, jadi silahkan uh, mencoba terlebih dahulu mau dari yang mana dan <coughs> uh, dari segi tekstur, rasa dan juga aroma ya. aromanya aromanya sudah gurih mm -hmm. uh, teksturnya mungkin kurang lembut ya mm -hmm. dan man, uh, manis kedelainya kerasa oh, manis kedelainya.
So, uh, based on Miss Danny commentary on our uh, control tempeh product, she said that uh, the tempeh uh, was uh, soft, not compact enough, but the taste is uh, uh, sweet, uh, uh, sweet due to the uh, soybean taste, and then uh, the smell of the tempeh is uh, smell like tempeh so the next one please <coughs> teksturnya hampir sama mm -hmm. aromanya aroma uh, tempe tapi kayak sedikit basi ya, oh. ya. terus rasanya juga agak-agak kecut gitu. Oke. Okay. Ya. Yeah. Alright. So based on <coughs> Miss Danny commentary on this uh, our uh, functional tempe one, she said that the texture was similar with the control one, and the taste uh, is a bit uh, uh, acid. So uh, and then uh, the smell uh, is quite similar with the normal one, but there is a uh, uh, different uh, smell, like a, a rotten smell. But uh, is it strong or not? No. Oh no, yeah. So it's the 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 smell uh, is not strong enough. So thank you, Miss Danny. You welcome. Yes. Okay, so next uh, we have Miss uh, Lala to give a commentary regarding our uh, two products. So please, Miss Lala. Okay. Oh, dirasa yes, yang dulu ya. Yeah. langsung dibau. Yeah. So, what did you think, Miss Lala? Langunya masih masih tempe, masih kedelai, mm -hmm. terus agak kecut sih kalau saya. Mm -hmm. Terus baunya bau ini, bau ragi gitu. Oke. Okay. Seger seger bau ragi gitu. Oke. Okay. So uh, based on Miss Lala commentary uh, regarding of this uh, our control product, she said that uh, the taste of the bean is still uh, has a beany taste on that one, and uh, the aroma or the smell is uh, uh, smell like a standard tempeh, and the. Uh, the taste, although it also contains the beany uh, flavor, it also has uh, an acid flavor in uh, that one. So, uh, yeah, based on this control uh, one, it has uh, acid and then beany flavor, and uh, the smell or the aroma is like a regular tempeh one. So, next we will move into uh, our uh, modified tempeh. Teksturnya enggak ya, sama-sama tempe ya. Iya. Uh, sudah nggak terlalu langu yeah. kalau bahasa ininya langu ya nggak yeah. terlalu langu terus kayak uh, raginya itu kayak ada ada campurannya bukan 
fresh hmm. bau ragi gitu loh oh, iya. terus rasanya uh, beda dengan tempe yang biasa dimakan oh, okay. yeah. agak nggak uh, terlalu kecut juga sih ini oke okay. oke okay. So based on uh, Miss Lala commentary on this uh, uh, our modified tempe one, <coughs> she said that the beanie flavor was less uh, compared with the was lesser compared with the uh, regular tempe one, and it's not acid uh, uh, compared with the regular uh, tempe one, uh, and but uh, the smell. It's not like a regular tempe, yeah. Because we have add uh, some lactic acid bacteria in this tempe, so uh, the normal tempe uh, aroma uh, it's not strong enough in this uh, product. So thank you, Miss Lala, for your Makasih. commentary. <laughs> so based on uh, our uh, analysis. Uh, we can compare that the function on tempe one uh, still has uh, the consistency and the taste uh, and then the aroma is quite similar with the uh, regular tempe one uh, thus uh, it can be uh, developed uh, further developed for uh, functional tempe uh, by using uh, simple methods uh, to increase uh, the functional properties or health properties activity of this tempe by adding uh, some lactic acid bacteria from fermented cassava thank you for your attention and see you at uh, another occasions thank you uh, i'm rio uh, see you again at another occasion